Welcome friends to TV Box Stop, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. Today I have another exciting new TV Box review. Taking the Spin is a new player on the market that adds some competition to Yugu's and B-Link Hexacore models. Presenting the X99 Max. And this is a new TV box running on the Amlogic S922X Hexacore CPU, the Mali G52 GPU, 4GB of DDR4 RAM, and 128GB of internal storage. So do you think this is any threat to Yugu's and B-Link high-end boxes? There's only one way to find out. Stay tuned, a full review is up next. Welcome back. So this is the box it comes in. There is no labeling anywhere on the outside, only a small tag below the box that says that it has 4GB of DDR4 RAM and 128GB of internal storage. So without further ado, let's see what's inside. In the box there are only 4 items instead of 5. You have the TV box itself. You get an infrared remote, one HDMI cable, and a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter. There is no user's manual. And now a look at its design and its input-output peripherals. The body is made of plastic, with the X99 Max logo printed to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI 2.1 port, one Ethernet LAN port, one audio video port, one optical audio SP diff port, a reset button and the DC power input jack. To one side you have one USB 3.0 port, another USB 2.0 port, and a microSD card reader. It's blank to the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box you have some cooling vents. I will set it up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So the box is connected. And as I initiate the first boot-up process, I am greeted by a boot-up animation for a few seconds. Then you are taken to a quick startup wizard. Once the wizard is completed, you're taken directly to the launcher. So here we are at the launcher. It's the usual layout. It looks clean with a nice color scheme, with large main buttons that cannot be changed, and a shortcuts bar that has no add button. This launcher has no navigation bar and status bar, which together with the missing shortcuts add button, points me in the direction of an alternative launcher and an alternative navigation bar. But before I get to that, let's look at its firmware features. In the settings area under advanced settings you have the following features. 4K display resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set the priority between video and graphics. Screen position settings. HDR display settings. Digital audio settings, with the option to select the audio output medium, and they also included in this section your Dolby Atmos and DTS surround sound audio options. HDMI CEC settings. Power key options and picture color adjustment settings. Under the device preferences area you have your core system settings, and under sound settings you have the same audio options to manually enable Dolby Audio, Dolby Atmos, and DTS audio features. In the apps section they have included a variety of system apps, streaming apps and utility apps. Most notable is the inclusion of Miracast, a working version of Netflix, KD Player, the Google Play Store, and YouTube. I will now install some apps of my own and continue. To begin this segment I will first check to see if the box is rooted. The Root Checker app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. This box does not come with a root switch feature as we have seen in recent top boxes. The DRM information shows that the box has Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means that premium streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video will only show in basic 480p quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Imlogic, and the model is the X99 Max. 
It comes with 4GB of RAM which is DDR4 memory, and this is the remainder of the storage from the 128GB after the Android installation and all the apps I have installed. The Bluetooth version here is 4 Plus, which indicates that you have Bluetooth 5.0 support. The CPU is the powerful Mlogic S922X CPU divided into two cores. A dual-core ARM Cortex-A53 running at 1.8 GHz, and a quad-core ARM Cortex-A73 running up to 1.7 GHz for a total of six cores for a max CPU of 1.8 GHz, on a 64-bit instruction set running in 32-bit mode. The box has support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. The GPU is the Mali G52 graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz and OpenGLES 3.2 support which is great for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 9 Pi operating system, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box runs between 45 to 55 degrees Celsius under a normal room temperature without air conditioning, and this can rise up to 70 degrees under heavy activity. Applying an active cooling fan keeps it below 50. The box comes with codecs needed for the playback of 4K videos with Dolby and DTS audio formats. And that's it for system and hardware information, and let's take a look at its benchmarks. First I have the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures memory and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the X99 Max has a RAM copy speed of 5683 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 129 MB per second and a write speed of 112. These results are pretty good and augurs well for this box. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results show that the X99 Max was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 100 megabits per second on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band only. The 2.4 band fell below by 53%, and the LAN port by 57%. So for the best internet speed use the 5 GHz band. This also means that this box does not have a gigabit Ethernet LAN bandwidth. Next, I have the results of the Antutu benchmark. In this test the box scored 121,279. This is a high score, and we will see how it places on the chart in a moment. In the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, the X99 Max got a score of 1,225 single-core and 3,331 multi-core. This is another good score, consistent with other boxes carrying the S922X. In the GPU benchmark the Plus model scored 1,129 in the Slingshot Extreme, 1,588 in the Slingshot Test, and it maxed out in the Ice Storm Extreme Test. These scores are also really great, but it does not have Vulkan support. So that's it for the benchmarks, and let's see how it places on the chart. So the scores are in. And the X99 Max placed at position number 4 in reference to Antutu scores, placing higher than the Yugu's AM6 Pro. However, in spite of having a higher Antutu score than the Yugu's AM6 Pro, the other benchmarks show that the AM6 Pro tops the X99 Max. This chart is available on my website in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it and compare various scores, see the link in the description area. So that's it for the benchmarks, and now a look at its entertainment features. I will start with alternative launchers. Alternative launchers work fine on this box, and I am currently using the ADW Launcher 2 Alternative Launcher, with all mouse pointer features working like drag and drop shortcuts and long click pop-up menu. As you can see I have installed the menu button alternative navigation bar and the snowball notifications bar. However, the snowball app does not work. Netflix comes pre-installed on the box and it works okay, but it is limited to basic 480p quality due to insufficient Google Widevine digital rights support. The X99 Max comes pre-installed with the KK Player. KK Player
For today's featured streaming APK I feature the Nova TV app. Nova TV like most APKs has a similar format. It has a movie and TV show section, and it has this nice category bar to the top for easy navigation. The interface is snappy, and you can stream in HD quality. For more information see the link in the description area. The Android TV version of YouTube comes pre-installed, and I updated to the latest version and got the annoying text-to-speech Google Assistant feature. Recommended, Bro, Fast 9 Trailer, 4K Ultra HD, New 2020. So to fix this issue as usual I updated the app on the Google Play Store and fixed the problem. Once this is done, you can enjoy YouTube videos in 4K quality. I will now play some 4K video samples in HDR format at 60 frames per second. And only a win for the ball back into the pitch and the half-time whistle had gone. The second half gets underway. I'd let it go attacking the two teams playing here in the camp. No, Jeers as a Barca player goes down off the post from David Villa. But if it at least puts it back in, what an amazing... The samples played quite well. I achieved HDR quality even though you can't see the icon appear on the screen through my capture card. By special request I will now play my list of videos with Dolby Atmos and DTS audio formats via the Kodi Media Player.
channel. Next, we have the center channel. Over here is the right channel. So this test shows that the X99 Max has Dolby Atmos and DTS audio output via the Kodi Media Player, but I didn't get Dolby True HD. I also double checked it on the VLC player but the results were the same. I will now switch the receiver to TV mode to test Dolby Atmos and DTS audio via the optical audio cable I connected to the back. You will also have to switch the audio to SB diff output in the settings area. So via HDMI pass-through you have Dolby Atmos and DTS audio output, but I didn't get Dolby True HD. However, when connected via optical cable I didn't get Dolby Atmos nor did I get Dolby True HD. I only got DTS audio pass-through. For my final segment I will now play some Android games and test for keymapping capability.